Thank you for joining me again today for Thulium, element number 69. You might have noticed this week, and maybe in life, that some elements are elements we talk about all the time. Oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, gold, silver, etc. And not necessarily at the dinner table, unless you're a nerd like me, but in other contexts, sure. We might talk about oxygen in hospitals or gyms, nitrogen as a fertilizer for gardening, carbon as the basis for life or when our carbon monoxide detectors beep at us all the time. Change that battery. Gold and silver as money. Then there are the lesser known elements that act as resources, like tantalum for electronics, rhenium for jet engines, or technetium for medical diagnostic tests elements with specific and important applications. And there are some lesser known elements like osmium used for things like fingerprinting and fountain pens, uh, yesterday's element dysprosium, and today's element thulium. And that's what this week has been all about, taking an opportunity to talk about some of the less popular elements that don't come up in everyday life, but still affect us nonetheless. So. How does thulium affect us? Much like dysprosium, there's not many commercial applications, and I have to admit, I had a little bit of a hard time with today's episode. Maybe it's because it's the 21st video I've written in the last couple weeks, or because it's just kind of a boring element. Even the origin of its name is just okay. It's named after Thule, the ancient name for Scandinavia. Yeah, but then I started to think differently about it. Sure. There's not much that can be done with thulium that can't be done better and cheaper for another element, but there have been some experiments that show promise. Like thulium is apparently pretty great for portable x-ray devices. And because it's a low energy source, it's fairly safe. I read that it's been used in some small scale devices like ones that dentists use and that engineers can use that technology to look for cracks in component materials. It can also be used for lasers, including lasers for surgery. So that's all pretty neat. And for sure, it's way more useful than all of those elements that only exist for fractions of a second. This week helped to remind me that so many of these elements that exist that are not very well known are used in things beyond what we learn about in school. And the resources we use in our world go way beyond energy sources like natural gas and oil, and beyond food sources like fish and wheat, and beyond building materials like wood and stone. And I've been really excited to share everything I've learned with you. And wherever you are right now, and whatever you're doing, I encourage you to look at all of the things around you that you weren't born with and imagine where every single tiny component of that thing, where it might have come from and what the story might be about the people and the politics of the environment where those resources come from. This is the end of Lesser Known Elements Week, so I'll see you tomorrow for a new week, new location, and new elements.